Welcome back to episode nine of the Two Thinking Apes podcast. Today we are honoured to have sen- YouTube sensation Hugo <laughs> Broom on board with us, who also has a very contagious smile and laugh. Thank you, fellas. <laughs> um, do you want- <laughs> that was good, mate. Do you want to start by just... Oh, I'll say the name first. Oswerdos Gringos. Is that what the YouTube channel is called? So, that- so that's the old one. The new one is... Hugo Groom, Ehe, E E Ah, okay. Yeah. Hugo Groom, Ehe. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. It means like, have I made a mistake? That was uh-huh. my sort of catch line for a while. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> have you made a mistake? Well, look, I hope, I hope coming on this one seems to be a good idea. It turns out to be a good idea. So at yeah, the moment, we'll see, mate. Right? We'll <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, what we were just saying before we click record, six years since we've seen each other. Um, yeah. Hugo was our football coach um, at school, for anyone's listening who doesn't know, because there'll be thousands of listeners, of course. It was, um, a, mighty, it was a mighty team, yeah. Correct, yeah, it was. So it was what, what have you been doing with yourself since then? Because from what I remember with you is you always had your mate with you. You taught yeah, us what that was. And you'd yeah. always bloody rock up late to Saturday morning games. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah sorry yeah <laughs> oh look i was always out um things have, uh, things have definitely you could tell it was a serious uh football team wasn't it we of but course. we did well we did well um did well. things have oh well look a lot's changed i was sort of just beginning back then and i guess oh, i would have come a lot a long way in terms of what i've been doing which is a bit different you know it's not your run-of-the-mill sort of stuff i guess Exactly. That's why we thought we'd have a chat. Yeah. So you, were you, did you already know Spanish then? Is Portuguese Spanish the same thing? Like is the hyphen, is that a, its own dialect or? So Portuguese is a bit different and yeah, Brazilian okay. Portuguese is like, yeah, even, even more different. I've got no idea. <laughs> no, that's all good. So um, I'd already, back then when I was coaching you guys, I'd started and I already spoke Portuguese. There, there are thousands of Brazilians in Sydney and obviously I was a bit younger back then, so I wasn't taking it as seriously. It was a bit of a, you know, just a fun thing on the side, but I didn't think it had become my, uh, my thing. You know, I didn't think it'd become my career and I didn't think I'd take it that seriously. And then, you know, I, I tried corporate for a bit. I didn't really enjoy it. And I just realised, you know, just because you, you know, especially in our background and everything doesn't mean you have to do, you know what I mean? Not everyone's going to be finance, law, engineering. That's exactly what I study. Yeah. That's, why, yeah. that's why we started this. To yeah, see and, um, other branches. You're just look, a number tailing. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. And I just sort of decided, you know, I loved it. And I got into teaching. And at first I was teaching uh, foreigners English. And then all these Aussie guys would pop up asking for uh, lessons in Portuguese. And then I sort of dropped the corporate stuff working in IT. I don't know what I was doing. And then one thing to, led to another. I was teaching at a school and giving private lessons. And then the, the virus came along. And I got shafted, so I thought it's do or die. I'm going to go solo. And then it's been a big success since then. I've been teaching on Zoom. Uh, and I just decided, you know, it's time to get the YouTube sorted. Let's launch a course. So we're all full steam. It's a lot of work, but it's full steam ahead at the moment. Hmm. All right. So that's pretty cool. Um, a few questions then. Go for it. We'll start from the beginning then. Uh, how did you learn Portuguese? Did you use Duolingo? Because I'm trying to learn Turkish because my background's Turkish on Duolingo. Can you actually learn a language from an app fluently? Oh, I think you dropped out. Uh, Duolingo is yeah, all my words. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. you cut out for a second. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, Duolingo. Oh. All right. Yeah. Oh. I, don't, I don't know if it's mine or... Bloody hell, what a pain in the ass this thing. Sorry. The, That's is, all that, right. is it my internet? No. Oh, we don't want to say um, yours, but maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, all right. That, um, <laughs> so, no, it's been woeful recent. It's not my fault. I think it's the, the bloody apartment, the apartment complex. Um, so, you and Lingo's all right just to get a few words in. But it's yeah. nothing, uh, nothing. I wouldn't recommend it for learning a language, no. I uh, started hanging around Brazilians and just, you know, kept asking them to teach me things. And I think it's you, Talon. Your, yours, yours is frozen, I don't, because I can see Costin clearly. Really? I think, I think it may be you, Talon. 
<laughs> no, I can see all both of you moving nice and freely. Yeah. Okay. I think we're back in business now. Um, okay. Good. Sorry. So I, I, I mean, yeah, I, I don't want to take too long talking about it on the podcast, but long story oh, short, oh. hanging out with Brazilians, learning, you know, at Sydney University when I was doing arts there, just learning new words, picking them up and then just making sentences. And, it, you know, obviously over months, you get better and faster at it. And that's sort of how it works. A few Brazilian girls inspire you at the very beginning or? They did, they did. But now <laughs> I'm a, well, seven married man. Oh, so, no. uh, I've got the missus here, the boss. The boss. Uh, so you've got to be careful what you say, hey? <laughs> oh, she's all right. She's, there's nothing, you know, she's not aware of. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, she, yeah. yeah, so she's great. And uh, we, you know, we speak Portuguese 24-7. So she's just... Really? Yeah. Well, so, Taylan spoke Turkey. Like, we're in Japan a few years or a couple of years ago now. And we were sort of, like, drunk one night. And then Taylor started speaking fluent Turkish to some random Turkish bloke in the street. Oh, that's true. And I have no idea how it happened because he tries to speak Turkish when he's sober, like to Turkish, me, and it's I disgusting. It like my ears start bleeding. <laughs> and then he's he's holding a conversation with his bloke for a good five minutes. Just must have been talking out of his ass. But like, I, I don't know. Maybe you actually do know Turkish, mate. Back back in you back in here, mate. Do you do I you tell? Bit no. of drunk Dutch courage as well, but a few drinks. It was help. probably, I was probably just saying words and I told him I could speak. I forgot about that story. Oh, the, the guy was conversing. <laughs> yeah, true. I, I was know. surprised. I don't know. You're oh, a language yeah. specialist, Hugo. Is that possible? Um, what happens is a lot of people, a lot of people get stage fright when they're learning a language and mm. someone starts speaking and they go, oh, oh, I can't speak the language. But especially after a few drinks, you loosen up and you, you'll find you, you know a lot more than you think you do. And you can Maybe. really get some sentences out. So, yeah, probably a few drinks slash bit of hidden knowledge in there. But you didn't really <laughs> yeah, have the mix. Deadly combination, hey? Yeah, absolutely. No, good on you. <laughs> what about um, in terms of your YouTube channel, there's a lot of content you produce. What made you... For, well, actually, before that, I want to ask, what made you go down the path of quitting that corporate job aside from not liking it? Like, how did you get the balls to actually do that? Oh, well, I just realized that, like, you can feel when something's you. And when you first start, especially when you, because I was probably 23 when I got it, and I was working, in, and I was like, oh, sweet. Yeah, I'm a man. I'm wearing a suit, blah, blah, yeah, blah. And then sexy while, corporate. You, yeah, you think you're a boy. And for some people, it's fine. Some people, they, they really, you know, it's their thing. They, but for me, I was never like that. I was always a bit different. I always liked my language, just meeting new people. And, you know, I, I was a bit different. And I just felt there that I wasn't happy. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's a job. But I was going in there and I was only going in there to chat to people. I didn't feel utilised. I didn't feel I was coming home sad. And I just realised, like, this isn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not accepting this. I'm not doing what I, what I enjoy. And, uh, yeah, I just sort of left it. I, well, no, I did. And <laughs> the, boss, I, well, the boss asked me, I sort of half-half. He said, look, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. He said, it doesn't look like you're enjoying yourself here and your productivity sort of declined. And I thought, well... I'm not going to beat around the bush. And, uh, you know, I thought about going to law, things like that. Then I just realized I'm just doing it because everyone else is doing it. Mm. I have no interest. You know, I was good at English, but I have no interest in doing that. And then I realized I've always loved teaching, but a lot of people tell you, oh, there's no money and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, but with the internet nowadays, there's money in everything. Yeah. And it's not about, I mean, if there's anything I've learned, you don't just rock up to a job and, oh, yeah, I'm going to earn 100, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to earn all this money and I'm going to be a boss in the long run. It, it doesn't work like that. You've got to find something you enjoy and then work your way up. Some people can do it, but I, I can't do it. I can't do something I don't enjoy. All hmm. right. That's interesting. Well, I'm in that position in the sense of I have a job lined up in February. I don't know whether I like it till I start, but I'm being open-minded about it, but I won't know till I start, I guess, but I can, see myself being my fear is that I start it and then I feel like I I don't like it what do I do now you know what I mean that's why I kind of relate to what you're saying a bit but I don't know did you drop out oh no, you still oh, no don't, be, don't, don't be silly like as soon as you as soon as you start it you, you you'll see what it's like like you get into it and then if you would genuinely enjoy engineering and maths you'll love it you know yeah. how long so are you working at the place for before you realized 
Oh, I, I only did. I only did a few months. I only did three months, and they were like, "Oh, you should be working in tourism or something else." Yeah. So there was no like, you know, I didn't last very long. But like, I didn't have an interest in IT. I've I've interest in like history and writing. But even then, the idea of law doesn't appeal to me. And you know, there's so much out there that you can do. There's like, you know, there's so much more. You just find your path. Yeah, that's what people say, and you hope that. But I guess not everyone does. At the end of the day, though. You know what I mean? I mean? Not everyone. Like, I still don't know. I still have my fears. I don't know how, you know, I'm, I'm trying to launch an online course at the moment. Mm. And I'm not sure how, how big it, you know, wh- you know, but you just got to put faith in the process and just, you know, if you work hard and, you know, especially with all the stuff, I'm sort of selling my image. So it's a lot of social yeah. media work. Yeah. I've seen that. Well, yeah, you've definitely thrown yourself in from what I've seen. And it's pretty good stuff. I had a, like, I had a look before. Um, were you doing the YouTube stuff beforehand? Or- so here's, here's the thing. I guess it was a bit of a personal, uh, how would I say this in English? It was a bit of a personal thing as well because I, before I coached you guys, I actually made a couple of videos on YouTube. That were huge. Well, one of them was really big, got 50K hits, and it launched me in the Brazilian community, and then I gave up. I was 21 and I gave up because I just, I just thought, of the t- no, it's too much work. No, I piss off. I need more likes. But no, nah, no, nah, this isn't for me. And you just find out make, you're making excuses and you're a loser. Yeah. But at the time, I, can't, I was quite hard on myself for a while because I gave it up. I had people messaging me all over the world, Brazilians loving my content, enjoying my stuff, and I just gave it up because I was lazy because I was 21, thought I knew better. So if there's anything, I was very happy to come on the program tonight because you may think, oh, no one watches, no one listens, sorry, no one listens, or oh, blah, 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 who are we? You'd be surprised if you just continue. Like people appreciate your stuff. People get around it, and it shows courage. And people who can actually like do something different, it's it's courageous, and it's really it's something special. So like I gave it up, and then for like four years I didn't have the balls to do it. And you find those people who make excuses, like I was. Oh no, it's too much work. No nah, man, after work, no, it's excuses. You know, they have a simple expression in Portuguese: fewer words. You know, those who want do. It's yeah. true. Yeah, there's no such thing as like, I'm too busy. That does a, that, And so I, it was a personal thing in quarantine and I had help from my girlfriend. She's like, don't, you know, what are you waiting for? Just do it. And, you know, it's, it, it's hard. Sometimes I'll produce this amazing video, in my opinion, and I don't get many hits. And then the video that I make in five minutes is a piss take, is the one that goes off. And I just think, well, what can you do? But you yeah. just got to be persistent. Nothing, no internet, like you may get someone who makes a viral video and gets lucky, but you don't get anywhere in your, unless you're consistent. Mm. Yeah. Thanks for that. That was a good J off and it's relevant to us, I guess. No, is- because I see you guys and you, you know, I, I could tell from your tone when you sent me a message, oh, you know, we're just a little, how do you think everything starts? It's just yeah. a little, and you'd be surprised. You think no one's, li- people, when people listen, they're, they're kind of, oh, I, I heard you think, I listened to your thing. It was really good. Good on the, for the initiative. And it's like, that's what's so separate. It gives you an edge. It makes you interesting. And, and like, this is how ideas, you know, success in terms of what you define, it doesn't just come about from you following like, oh, I'll just do this. You know, it's trying new things and being persistent. And yeah, we learn yeah. a lot of stuff from this as well, personally. So mm. cool. Yeah, we already have. We're already nine episodes in and we've, I, well, Costin and I, we've talked about it like privately. We've already learned a lot of stuff just from chatting with, so like you don't realize the like vast array of paths until you start chatting with people aside, like there's that general go to school, like in our case, like private mm. school, you have mm. an expectation, you go to uni, you get a grad job and then that's yeah. it. That's the part, the very straight and, and narrow. And yeah. I feel like in your early, maybe first year, second year uni, at least for me, you kind of think that's the only path because it's safe and it's secure and it, it's not a bad path, but it's, there, there are other options as well, which is just something interesting that I've kind you of... Do, yeah, got to, you've got to do what sort of completes you. And that wasn't going to... I was good at English. I got a good HSC school. That could have, I could have gone into law. And then I just thought, I wouldn't be happy. I'd just be doing it for the, for the LinkedIn title. And I just, yeah. you know, they'd be like, that, that's it though. But it's true. But I still have those thoughts and I have to fend them off. You know, should I just go get a sales job and rise up the ranks? But that, that wouldn't be me. And yeah. you, like, if there's anything I'm learning is trusting the process. And if you don't like, you know, if you have a plan B, then you're not fully committed to your plan A and mm. you just got to go for it. I'm yeah. at the stage now where I'm trying to grow the balls to take 
the like big step out of like working for someone and doing my own thing. Tell them, is, tell them what you do. So, <laughs> what do, you do um, I've been working for a construction company for five years, full time mm. with uni. Um, and yeah, it's almost five years now. It's like well, four years and 10 months almost. Um, it works his balls off the amount of hours he does. I really <laughs> like building like construction, like that in itself makes me happy and I love it, but I'm sort of over doing it for someone else. And I sort of want to do it for myself. And I've been doing things in the background. Like I've started to write a business plan and or like started a logo just for a bit of fun. And I'm, it's sort of like waiting for like my balls to drop and just take the step and just go for it type thing. But don't, I'm not sure like how, and I'm a bit hesitant. And Well, what I do is this, right? So my moment came because I got shafted from the school. So as terrible as it sounds, COVID was a blessing because I was just working for someone else. I was learning skills. It was a bit of fun, a bit of a laugh, but at the end of the day, you're right. Like sometimes it's good to work for people. Sometimes it sucks. And when you want to do your thing, you know, your time's come. And obviously I'm only a few, like, I'm not, you know, I'm not some bloody 40 year old with all this experience. It doesn't matter, but you're, along the, you're further along the path than we are. Well, what I've noticed is like, you know, if you're not happy working with someone, like then something's got to change. And what, what I was just lucky enough that I got shafted. So I had to swim. You know, I had to, I was yeah. thrown in the deep end. Whereas I was already doing it on the side, but I wasn't fully committed. And ever since then, I've gone all in and it's been great because I run my own schedule. I'm fully booked all the time because of all the social, the YouTube sort of my marketing. But, you know, you never know. There's always risk. You know, I don't have paid holidays. I don't really, you know, they, I'm just working at as I go. There's always risk, but there's anything. You just back yourself and just the more preparation costs. And if there's any advice, the more you prepare the better you'll be. Don't just wing it. That's what I did for a whole year when I started. If you're prepared, you've got your bat, your action plan, you'd be surprised. Like if there's anything, I mean, are you living at home at the moment? Are you with your parents? Are you yeah, at home. At home. Well, Great. What, Fantastic financial decision. Well, what have you got to lose? Not much. His job. Exactly. Yeah. So like I remember because I had my girl and she lost her job and she's Brazilian, so she couldn't get benefits. So it was pretty much, it was me or we just moved into a apartment it was up to me or we would be screwed so i had to do it whereas you're i see what you know you're not lacking balls or anything you're just you're uncomfortable so it's hard to move out of that yeah but if you really feel that you wake up one day and like all right i'm just going to give this a crack i can always go back to it why not yeah but you know it, it's like how much do you want it? you know it's it's up to you you know we change and you just got to find you know think do i want this you know I do really want it. The other thing is I do have a few expenses that sort of need to get paid every month. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, but you know, you, you, if, if you get a bit of work, you'd be surprised. It just sort of builds and then next minute you'll be, you'll be your own man. Yeah. Nice little, no, the next ethnic developer in the show. <laughs> yeah. How original. <laughs> <laughs> well, so look, give it a go now and see at least you'll, or like down the track, at least you'll get a fair bit out of it. Even if it doesn't work, you learn a lot from experiences. Yeah, well, the thing I'm, that's working in my favour in terms of doing it is the fact that I'm young and have nothing to lose. It's better to do it now and fail and go back to something that I've been doing already anyway when I've got pretty much nothing as opposed to having like a wife or a kid or something. And well, exactly. you've got liability. you got responsibility. Exactly. Could have gone, uh, could have gone pear-shaped for me with the old mate here. I had to hold the fort, but I was lucky that you know, if you'd be surprised, you probably think at the back of your mind, oh, I'm not that good or whatever. Like once you start believing in yourself and go, you know what, I'm, pro I'm not amazing, but I know my stuff and I've got experience, then things will just happen for you. And oh, then people like start that. putting the trust in you and you'd be surprised. Like I still like, I wake up and I was like, holy crap, people are messaging me to teach them, mm. like to get them a job. And I was like, me? But I've been working for this for a while. You know, I was the guy who made you guys do laps because I didn't know how to coach football. You know, <laughs> like, you know, what I mean? like this is, but I know what I'm doing. You know, and I'm yeah. still, you never stop learning. If you think you're awesome, you like, there's always so much to learn in every field. Yeah. Did you get backlash from your family or friends when you went away from the cushy job? Oh, no. Well, my, my, my dad was always like, look, what am I sending you to Newington for? But he said, you know, if you're just going to follow the run of the mill thing, well, that's just boring. Yeah. And, you know, that was from my parents. They were like, if you're just going to do that, like we're raising, we sent you on exchanges. We, you know, we want you to be someone like be your own man. Mm. And, uh, you know, what you've got to do is just sort of make sure, well, they're always, you know, make sure you're earning a bit of money from it. Don't just yeah. muck around. And, yeah. you know, dad was always very strict on, 
I don't want you working on the factory floor because I was bludging for a fair bit. Because yeah. there was a time before this where I was just sort of bludging. I just didn't really have any motivation. I was just chilling after uni, doing odd jobs. You don't want to be that guy. That sucks. But as long as you're on a path and they, they're very supportive of me now and always telling you know, how you're going to grow. So that's always a thing of them now. They're always telling you, know, you don't want to be earning the same for too long. You've got to keep growing and, you know, make sure there's no ceiling, so to speak. And I guess I haven't hit that yet. And we'll see what happens when I launch this course. That's so, good. That's yeah. exciting. When's the yeah. course set to launch? Oh, look, we'll full steam ahead to get it done in a couple of months, but my editors live in a hotspot. And, oh, wow. uh, so we can't do anything. And I mean, obviously, we weren't going to breach COVID rules anyway, but we were recording units, we were smashing it, and then boom. So I've had to buy, you can see the equipment in the back. I've had to yeah, buy it myself. Yeah. But as well as managing YouTube, writing a course, it's a lot of thinking and teaching lessons, preparing for lessons. It's a lot of work, but you know, you just got to, if you're passionate about it. Yeah. Well, that's what I think. I'm just going to give it my absolute all. And at least I can say I gave it a go. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you know, everyone's, but even then, like everyone's, you know, I, I don't, I still don't fully believe in myself. I still have my doubts and I go, Oh no, but who's going to trust me. But then, I walk around and presidents come up to me like, man, I love your content. I learned so much. You really know your stuff. And I'm like, whoa, okay. And <laughs> just, you're always going to think your biggest, your biggest naysayer is yourself. The one that always, oh, no, but I'm not, it's, it's me. Whereas other people have messaged me, I want to buy your English course. I want you to teach me. I was like, what, me? But you just got to back yourself. Yeah. So how do you handle, how do you handle the fear? Is it literally just through the like props from others or do you have a personal sort of thing that you do to try handle the fear of failure i guess because it is it would be more prevalent on your own and doing oh, something um like oh fear. there's all oh, there, look there's always that fear and it's always like you know even me i'd say i'm pretty confident but it's still there it's still there but i but, guess whenever i hear a compliment or whenever i just see someone with like you know i've got a few students especially aussie guys with good you know good jobs, Aussie girls are like good, solid, working at Westpac, be, you know, and they're trusting me to teach them Portuguese. And I'm like, hold up, I'm doing something right. And yeah. then, uh, you know, all these Brazilians messaging me and I'm able to raise the price and people still know I really want class with you. And I think, well, well that, that, that speaks for itself, you know, and you, you can feel it like you can blood yourself as well. It's, I guess it's a bit different in construct, but like in my sort of, you can actually bludge classes sometimes but you get caught out in the end, you know, you can, yeah. the first couple, you can be this charismatic fun guy. Like I was at soccer, co you know, but then <laughs> eventually as you guys worked out pretty quickly, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you can, like, you can, can work out if someone knows their shit or if someone yeah. doesn't know their and shit. And like you'll you get found out. But the thing is I, I know my stuff and there's a lot of stuff I don't know, but I'm learning. Yeah, so like I study and the good thing about teaching is once you've written a lesson, you can reuse it a million times. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, in English for Portuguese, I've got like a year and a half's worth of lessons written mm. and I just keep adding to it. And then English, I've got like 50 lessons that I just read, you know, write, add, add on to it, you know, do different things and just build up from there. Yeah. Can I ask, was personal to me in the sense of you're saying you, you knew that's what you wanted to do to trial and error. Costin's like set on the construction. For me, I don't know what I'm set on. The, the, you know how you said you got to throw yourself into it? Mm. I feel like the podcast Costin and I are doing, we're kind of doing that with this, but in terms of another thing, like, mm. I don't know. I just have a well, job. You don't, you don't know what to throw yourself into sort of thing. Well, yeah, Costin tells me I need to work for a couple of years and see for myself. I was just wondering what, you, what your perspective what is. Are you, what are you interested in? I like finance. I'm studying finance. Oh, so you sound helps. like you like it. No, well, well, I mean, I can tell the way, you said it, the way you said it gave me a, I like what I'm into. So I guess you're reading up all your investing stuff. Are you reading up on the, are you part of the forums? Are you part of the, I don't actually, but are you, you know, are you hanging out? I read, I read, I read about that stuff. I like, I do jujitsu. I like jujitsu. I read about that stuff. I watch a lot of videos on that. I like watching, I'm trying to learn about podcast stuff. So obviously I'm putting myself in that space. Those kinds of things. I, I agree with Costin because it, it doesn't just come to you. You don't just wake up and be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to start a finance company in jujitsu. You know, like, you know, it, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. 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 Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Sorry? Finance company in jujitsu. 
I, I agree with Cost because I, I didn't think I'd be tutoring privately. I didn't think I'd be launching an English course. I didn't, that wasn't my idea. A couple, you know what happened? I was working on my YouTube and then this Brazilian couple came to me and they said, can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Hello? Yeah. Tell We can hear. All right. So on, on, so the, the YouTube thing was, I mean, YouTube was my idea, but the course was not my idea. I didn't, I hadn't even thought about it. What happened was, well, I was just working hard and this Brazilian couple saw me and they said, we see your potential. Let's write a course. I hadn't even come to mind. I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think it was a thing. But that happened because I was working hard and someone saw me. Like if there's anything I learned is you don't just wake up. You start like building blocks, you know, work for a company and then you can see an opportunity. Or maybe, yeah. you see, I don't know, with you, something you go, oh, but I can actually like, I can see a potential business here, if that makes sense. Or well, you meet the right person. So it's, it's um, yeah, you meet the right person and you, you'd be surprised if people notice. So like you could be working, you know, working harder way in a cup a job necessary love I missed you wanna and things just happen for you. But if like there's anything advice I can give you, I wasted. So like I, I was a good student, I wasn't a muck around student at all. After you after I came back from Brazil, so I, I coached you and then at the end of that year I went for Brazil for a year. I thought as well that I was just gonna get this corporate cushy job, relax, get into it. But I did an arts degree. I didn't do finance where they just give you like a, hey, have a KPMG. I, I came back and I just yeah. bummed around for a year and a half just because I had nothing. I just bummed around. I did odd jobs and I wasted a whole year and a half. And I just, I, it, it bites me to this day. I just wasted a year. Stuff's all good like for a month. And then you're like, oh, I'm a loser. I've got nothing. I'm a waste of talent. And then I set my mind to, getting a job like just if there's any advice don't get don't waste time like what do you you know what do you want to do go do it yeah i, I wasted a year and a half who knows you know but i'm kind of glad i mean it's made me who i am today hey but like you gotta you know if there's any advice it's just play. what was the advice sorry you cut out don't, don't don't waste time as in like you know if you're gonna if you're gonna do something, you know, make sure you, 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 you want to do it. And it's something you feel it's really going to benefit you. Okay. That's good advice. Thanks. I'll take that on board. That's the theme that I'm getting from everyone we're talking to is throw yourself into everything you're doing and don't expect to know straight away. You'll figure it out with time. If you're constantly searching that kind of thing. Oh, and if you're just working hard at something and, and interested, things will present themselves. You know, mm-hmm. you never know know when it took me a few years like as i said that the course is something i didn't i hadn't thought of people came to me and suddenly it's become a reality you know it's surprising how many it's it's surprising how many people actually take notice of things that you think they don't take notice of you'd be surprised you think you think this this podcast or whatever people oh no it's just a yeah people who watch it be like oh this is a really good like the fact that two 20 year olds are interviewing like it's ballsy it's good you know that's where you yeah, start. Hopefully. hopefully. Yeah. Well, and, and you guys, even with this podcast, you could down the line, you could be like, all right, podcasts aren't us. But what you 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 will have learned from this podcast, just talking to people will have been worth it. You know yeah, what I mean? Well, that's like, you've, why already, you've already won. That's why you we guys started have originally. Already won. Yeah. We, we originally we started yeah. info, really, just to learn. Yeah, and I improved my speaking podcast. skills. Yeah, well, exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, if there's anything you guys, especially like even when you like just value your time, if you know your stuff, you know, especially jobs or whatever, make sure you charge the right amount, you know, like <laughs> things like that. Yeah. And then I remember because when I was 22, like I remember even language less. What was I doing? Like someone, oh, I charge like more than something an hour. You're like, oh man, but that person knows their stuff. That's why you pay more. Like, you know, every, you know what I mean? Like, uh, because I remember even till recent, I was like, oh my God, that person charges this much an hour. What the hell? Then you're like, well, the person gets the job done, you know? Yeah. And people are paying for that price. Yeah, exactly. So that exactly. exactly. So just little things like that make sure, like, I was a bit uneasy. I, I charged very little when I started because I didn't back myself. Yeah. And then you, you, you go and see, 
you know, you just got to back yourself and with experience, and, you know, trust the process. How was you doing? Oh, you go, Costin. No, I was just going to say, like, I remember um, la, well, the beginning of this year, I got a little, like, a pay rise. And I thought, mm. oh, holy Fuck, shit. Like, unit. like, mad. And then literally two weeks after, I got a job offer for almost double it. <laughs> and I was too scared <laughs> to, like, like, I didn't want to leave. But, like, I think one thing that will hold me back is that I'm, I don't know, it's like, it's like doing the right thing, but also maybe being stupid in the fact that I wouldn't, do something just for the or do it for the money when I probably should be. Like I don't know how to explain it. It's yeah, just that made it, no it, sense, like, it like mate. feels it like feels wrong to do it if I feel like I'm getting paid too much to do it. No, don't be silly. Even if they're willing to do it. Don't be silly. No, no, if that trust me, people have a lot more money and are willing to pay a lot more than you think. Because at your age, especially like, oh my god, person's gonna pay that. Think about how much you spend on beers just mucking around or a pub meal. Yeah, it's like, like a few dollars. You'd be surprised, but like you've got to learn. You've got to you got to learn this the hard way, and you've got to really learn. If you're doing something for the money, well, then that's one reason. But if you're generally like, oh, this person's giving me a thing. Oh, am I worth it? No, you're worth it. You're worth it. They've seen the potential. You know, that's what they want, and that's yeah. what you got to do. Go after it. Absolutely. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. I think for us as well, uh, the wog parents have ingrained in you a certain path. You know. Yes. It's a different, um, it is, a, it's slightly different, is it? But that, I mean, does that mean you have to necessarily? No, it doesn't. Yeah. No, it doesn't. But I mean, that's just another thing. I know that's something in the back of my head because I was raised in that way. And I know Costin's the same kind of thing. I thought maybe that's where you were going at with your job thing, Cos. But it's just interesting. No, I feel like I've ticked all the boxes for the ethnic parents. It's time to, <laughs> time to oh, no, but yeah. Trust me, I, I understand. It's a bit like my parents were a bit, um, but, but they still got the New England thing. Like we didn't send you that school to, yeah, to muck around. Oh, I've got that. Like, uh, you know, if I were to stay stagnant for a year, I think, you know, I'd flip out as well. And you mm. see, trust me, the FOMO is huge, especially on LinkedIn. Yeah. Everyone has wanker titles. <laughs> like, you know, you can give yourself, like, if I wanted, I'd be like master of, uh, you know, household teaching or, you know, <laughs> like you'd be, you'd be surprised. And it, when you look at that, you get anxious. You think, oh my God. You know, like even I remember when I started, I was like freaking. Well, I was I was a I was just answering emails, but I was customer service manager. Like you know, like you need you know, like you you just got to be careful. If there's anything as well, don't compare yourself to others because it sucks. Yeah. And there's always there's always going to be someone like depends what I mean better than you, earning more than you, whatever it may be. You can't compare yourself because you're just going to get. I did that for ages and it sucks, and you can't be doing that. Use it as a little bit of competition. Like, yeah, okay. Just wait them. Yeah, but like, don't, don't, you know, compare because trust me, you look at that stuff and it just gets you down. And yeah. You're like, yeah. Oh my God. Like, you just got to do your thing and just put your head down. No looking at other podcasts. Possibly. No, I'm weird. I, I watch stuff and it, like just, and then make myself angry for no reason. And then that just fuels me to do stuff. You're a psycho, man. <laughs> oh, as in, as in like, learn from them. what are they doing that you're not doing? You know, yeah. what, what, what's going on? And like, mm. you know, how, how are you on your socials and all that? If you guys got an Instagram, if you guys, you know. Yeah, you, we've got an yeah. Instagram. The, pod, the podcast has an Instagram. Well, you know, like, you know what I mean? You've got to, you've got to feed that. You've got to, and don't be afraid to put your head on it. Like, you've got to really. That's true, actually. We haven't done that. You've got a lot know. of people. Trust me, people want personality. They want relatability. And mm. you think at times that people, oh, they don't want to listen to, see to my head too much. Yes, they do. Otherwise, they wouldn't be listening to the podcast. That's they want to know where you are. That's true. Yeah. And that's that's what it is. Like, I still think that I I do a lot of Instagram stories. I have to. But even now, someone's like, oh, well, you know, maybe I'm talking too much. People are like, no, we want you. If you wanted information, there's a, there are a million videos on YouTube and websites. We're not, you know, yeah. you've got to think that at the end of the day. People, if they want information, they can just look it up, mm. you know. If they want a different point of view, something a bit different, a bit of spice, that's why they're listening to you. We got told on the last podcast by the uh, James Eagle, who owns his own business, that it's just as much about who you are as a person and how you market yourself, as well yeah. as how you market your product. Oh, which absolutely! Is, yeah, pretty much what you're banging on about, like right it's, now as well. It's good that there's commonalities at least, so yeah. we can start to see themes to it's kind like of a, like it's success. like a yeah. Well, no, that that's it's so important. That's what my 
editors, because I, I didn't study marketing, I've got 90, but they've been telling me that, like, trust me, when you think you've got to put your head out there and you've got to be that people, they that guy they trust, that person they trust and, you know, look to, you know, people look up to if you, you, you're putting yourself out there. And you'd be surprised. If, trust me, it's you know you've got to be courageous at the start. But once you get into a group, you don't think twice. And pe- you, you know you still think you're being silly. People look up to you. People be like, oh my god, this guy's this person's a giver of information. Mm. And if there's anything like I can teach you guys with with this sort of stuff, as long as you're putting out content that's helping people, and you're not, you know, I can already see you guys are doing, letting me doing most of the talking. You're not doing the whole, oh well, blah blah blah. I had this experience one time. Like that's not about us. Well, yeah. no, see, what I'm saying is like, if you're help, like really putting yourself out there to help other people, people recognize that. And that's what I've noticed. Like if you really put it on to others, how can I help you? You know, yeah. trust me, people, rec- people pick up on it. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask you this then? What do you think we should do moving forward to make this podcast a bit more, well, improve it in any way? Um, what do you think as someone who does content? So, okay. You're going to have to hit up probably... Look, if I were you guys, I would get a Instagram, get pumping on the Instagram with guys where, and you want stories, you know, we're about to record tonight with so, 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 uh, you know, whoever, you know, yeah, okay. uh, Mr. Gregory, you know, check out his Instagram. Like, it, it seems like a lot of work, but it's it's really not. You, you mm-hmm. guys are only doing it in one language unless Taylor, you're whipping out the Turkish. For, <laughs> no, I might, like, whip out the, might whip out the Greek for a couple. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah, cause, yeah. An ethnic um, like, and, and then, like, so what, did, what, what would I do if, if I were you guys? I would, firstly, I, I'd start doing some posts. You know, I'm, I'm, I haven't seen it. You have to send me. I'm Taylor and I'm Costa and this is what I like. Get to know us with a nice little artwork in the background, like your mm. face. I don't know how to do this. I get other people because we've got our friend does yeah, our work. mate's yeah. a graphic yeah. designer. <laughs> so meet 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 the podcasters, and then you want to do the odd story, just a few times a week. You know, this is who will be interest interviewing, and even your po- podcast. You know, some nice titles, a bit more background. You mm. know, just things like that. Maybe a photo of you two guys as well. I think would help. You know, do like a piss take with the apes behind and you like things like that. Even just yeah. to start so people get to know you, like you want to be relatable. You know, you can smile on the Taylor's got a cheeky smile that gave me the shits at soccer. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's like, it looks like people want to get looks. to know you. You know, people want to get to know you. Does that make sense? Like, you don't yeah. um, that, that, that's so important is putting yourself out there and, and also big thing, polls and quizzes. On, especially on Instagram, your polls and quizzes really boost your engagement. I don't so even know how I, do little, I do a little English. You don't know how? No. Oh, it's very easy. It takes 30 no. seconds on, on Instagram. And if you just do false, who should we interview? What would you like to see more of? Comment here. It really boosts your engagement. So I do that on Instagram. And the engagement, if I just put in, a like, you know, foreigners struggle with prepositions in on at. So I put, like, I've got something, space, my mind and people be like at my mind in and you get and then instagram recognizes that boosts your thing in yeah okay. that way people, and trust me people it sounds silly but people love clicking things like people love i love i love clicking things yeah like if you get a poll in there if you get a poll in your area something you're slightly interested people like do you like this this man you're gonna smash it it's, yeah. it's human nature like smash the poll like get people you know with their get their opinions out hmm. that's a good one that's it we're going to have a team meeting after this class. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Like even me, like what I do on my Instagram, I don't know if you guys sit, like, I'll, I'll just be watching a vampire movie and I'll be like, so what I do is, so I'm an English Portuguese teacher. So fangs, bang, teach a word. And then the next story, do you like vampire movies? Yes, no. And mm. then boom, you've already got engagement and it took me what? 30 seconds. I got to ask you. That's me for the day. That's me for the day. KKKKK me. Ka, 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 ka. So, Brazilian way of laughing is ka, 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 ka. Because ah, so I always say on your stuff, ka, 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 ka. No, it's, it's not. <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, a lot of people, yeah, it's not that uh, organisation in the United States. <laughs> it's, their, it's their laugh, ka, 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 ka. And I, it's so addictive. You think it's quite funny at the start, and then you get into it, and you just ka, 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 you just smack it. And I love it. Okay. And, yeah, that's, that's um, yeah, like... Trust me, guys, especially with the social media stuff, just, yeah, put yourself out and you'll be amazed. And reels, you want to be hitting the reels. Yeah, and I've like seen all a few this, of those. All this stuff is kind of hard to do at the start, like to learn, but once you learn it, it's all right. And then get a bit of help and 
you know, even the silly stuff, you put a little background, it's all there on Insta, it's quite straightforward. And here we are, yeah. I don't know, whatever. And then, like, trust me, it, it, it builds up and people are like, oh, this is kind of cool, you know? Mm. And don't, don't expect, if there's any, don't expect quick success. Oh, don't we're not. Like, yeah, we're, like, not. <laughs> no, we're not even doing it for success. We're just doing oh. it because we like it. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. In, well, that's, that's the right attitude. Do it slowly. Yeah. Build a, cl- a loyal, loyal fan base, people, and people come, people getting around that, and just you, you think you've done a good interview, people won't listen, and then you, when you've done a crap one, people randomly listen. It's just we, the way we it's. just said that. We literally were saying that before. We said the shittest one we've done has the most views, and like all the good ones are fucking. <laughs> but that, that's how it is. That's honestly, and also like as well, le- like leave leave room for a bit of spontaneity. So like. It, it's not good to have everything so prepared. Leave a bit of room to muck around and have a bit of smack talk. Well, we, we have nothing. That's the whole point. Well, Al, like, we just want to have a casual conversation with people. We just know, like, about them a bit, and then that's it. Whatever happens, happens. But that, that's perfect. Yeah, you just want to be yourselves. Don't worry about being too, like, just just go for it. Yeah? Yeah. I, this I, is I, the I, stuff I've picked up over the last year, you know? Mm. Well, that's that's a couple, couple gold gems there. We've got to market ourselves, Tay. Yeah, I know. We need to uh, jump on the Instagram, I think. I want to start learning how to use computers and stuff properly. Yeah. Like, yeah, good skills. Value. He only knows how to use bricks. Big old cost. <laughs> Valuable Concrete. skills, guys. Concrete. Um, I'll ask, well, what was Brazil like for a year? Because I was meant to go to Spain for a year or oh, six months before COVID fucked me over. Ah. So what uh, was, was that exchange or... Oh, no, I just went over there to live for it. It was, um, oh, it is, it is a fantastic place, amazing, but there are some strong cultural differences, so living is very different from visiting. I absolutely loved it, but there are, like, hundreds of things I would do differently if I had my time again. And one of the biggest things is, yet again, I went the, the you know, the, the Trotter path, which is everyone goes to Rio and Sao Paulo, everyone, but Brazil is a country of 200 million people. Yeah. Like, you know, 10 of what, 10 Australia's in it and it's huge and there are so many better, more interesting places. And I didn't risk it. I went th- to them, but I didn't, you know, set, set up shop there because I was scared. Oh no, I need to be in Rio Sao Paulo. No, you don't, you know, and just like, it was a fantastic experience. Amazing. I loved it. You know, people are friendly, people are fun, different ways, lots of Brazilian music, not much English, which makes it more interesting. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. And yeah. Cause I don't want to go across this other world to speak English. I can, you know, walk to the next house, you know? And um, yeah. that's always my thing. I love the challenge of it, learning new languages. It was absolutely amazing. Strong cultural differences, but yeah, we're definitely living abroad. One of the best things you can do, just immersing yourself in another culture. Because well, that's the one thing, yeah. even just traveling, not even living, but because we went to Japan and then after that, like literally beginning of last year, just before lockdown, we were in like Europe, sort of like Eastern sort of Europe and a few mm-hmm. Western European countries in winter. And we went all to the main capital cities, but I regret not going to the more rural that was the issue. towns. Like, for example, Austria, we were in Vienna, but Austria it. is such a beautiful place. And I would have loved to see the smaller towns and got to know more. Same as Amsterdam. Like we stayed in Amsterdam when the Netherlands has so many other places to uh, like visit. And we only, we kept to that sort of paved path instead of veering off and well, going to the less traffic. There's anything path. from now. I mean, look, I, I learned the hard way. I was in Brazil and I did all the things that, you know, and I realized, oh my God, like I love this stuff and I didn't chase it because I was scared. Like just pursue it. And anyone telling you, oh, no, nah, it's dangerous or, oh, no, nah, I mean, nothing will happen for you. That No, they're wrong. You can make something out, you know, it's going to happen. You yeah. know, if you just chase your interests. Yeah. Absolutely. I want to sort of follow my dad because he went back in the day to the Middle East and was has photos with like Mujahideen Mujahideen. members and all that yeah. like some like really he met the Dalai Lama like some like heaps weird stories but no one would do it and he's come out with all these stories meeting all these people and it's like oh I want to do that but like it's you'll have scary. your time once this cries you guys are, yeah you'll have your time like I, in my intent like you know the you know what a fa- do you guys know what a favela is yeah, yeah. so I'm just wondering if that's a common yeah, because yeah. no, you don't so, know anymore, do you? So, like, it's, it's like a double life for you, hey? Yeah, no, because I don't actually know, like, how much of it gets. So, um, you know, it's now, if you talk to Brazil, they'll, they'll never go. Because for them, if you if you were to some Aussie guy, oh, do you want to go to, you know, freaking some, am I allowed to swear on the program? Yeah. Like, yeah, fuck. If you want to go to some crap hole 
you wouldn't go. Like, you wouldn't yeah. go be a tourist yeah. out in Whoop Whoop just for the sake. Whereas, so Brazilians are like, why on earth would you want to go to a dangerous slum? But yeah. for gringos, it's freaking awesome. And, and they're always like, no, nah, it's dangerous. I went and they yeah. had machine guns and machine guns in the air. It was like the movies. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, I was, I was shitting myself. I was really scared. Because oh. <laughs> these guys with balaclava and the freaking guns, machine guns in the air, like the movies. I was like, whoa. You know, and I didn't stick around, but I'm glad I went because I saw something new. Yeah. And I, I don't know if I should recommend this on a podcast going, but like, I'm glad I went because it was a new experience and people were nice to me. I was scared, but people were like, oh, you're spending money in our community. Come on in and buy some beers. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, all right. And I'm, I'm so glad I went, but everyone was like, oh my God, you're an idiot. That's so dangerous. Blah, blah, blah. And oh, well, look, people talk, <laughs> oh, no, welcome in and come on in. Like, don't listen to what people say. Did you and go by yourself to Brazil? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I really want to travel by myself. It is I, fantastic. You meet yeah. so many people. Oh, it's good. Look, it's good to link up as well. Like I, after a while, I was starting to miss Australians. Is what you don't realize. Like we complain a lot about our own country, and everyone does. But after a while, you miss the commonalities. You'd be mm. like, oh, even like other English speakers. Like I met a lot of Americans. I was like, oh man, it's not the same Dude, thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, these guys, like it's not that you could, like Aussies and Kiwis are very distinct. You know, just like different. I was watching the Olympics, and on the track field one of the guys elbowed the Aussie while he was running and then he just finished and he gets on the mic and he's like, the boys are a bit cheeky out there, weren't yeah. they? Like, yeah, you, you'd, be, no, you'd be surprised. You don't realise how Australian you are until you meet. And like, even for us, like, look, we're taking the piss out of each other here, this whole thing. Like, we've sort of, yeah. like, that self-deprecating humour. In a lot of countries, I don't have that. That's and you just yeah. like, you probably know, but especially, like, especially with Americans and stuff, like, there are some great ones, but I met so many, oh, back home, no, nah, US. I was like, man, get over yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like, whereas in Australia, if I was to do that, you guys like, check me out, look at me, you'd be like, you're a wanker. Yeah. It's just a cultural difference, you know? Things yeah. like that. Like, after a while, I was like, oh, even with Brazilians or whatever, like, uh, uh, like I love a mix. Like, I love having a range of different things open to me, you know? Yeah. Mm. Do you feel like you live a double life a bit? Oh, Absolutely. Because I walk down, I bump into some guys from school occasionally. Everyone's doing their thing. And then I'm like, well, here I am speaking another language 24-7 and like making videos for a whole audience in another country that doesn't yeah. speak English. Learning and then, oh, completely. And I go to like, I can't, so I went to the 10-year reunion recently. And it was great and all, but it's not like it was before because I've changed. Like I, I speak another language. I have like different visions and perspectives mm. every day. I'm, I'm exposed to do to completely different cultures. And so, you know, I can't just be there go, so I'm working at the blah, blah, blah. And you things have been yeah. catch up with the boys. No, I can't do that. That's not me. Yeah. And I'm very glad that that's not me, in all honesty, mm. because I, I worked hard to have more to say, you know? Yeah. Plus, we had a five-year reunion as well, like, uh, what, a couple of months ago. And the five-year yeah. one, I feel, is a bit easier to um, I navigate. I thought it would be a dick measuring contest, but it wasn't, which is good. Because five years isn't long enough for anyone to, like, Get to a stage in their life, yeah, or like get to a stage in life where it's like, look at look at this. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) well, you'd be surprised. People get um, what can I say? People get uh, people mellow out, mellow out as well. Because I don't know what your year was, because our year was kind of like almost a bit like the competition, the whole matcha thing was pretty strong. And I remember it was real. It was a real thing. Like, nah, you're you're dick. I'm gonna bang your mum and like the whole thing. (laughs) And and you don't realize, but it was actually pretty brutal. You don't realize at the time. But like, if I was to go to uni or work and be like, yeah, nah, f you, like, you know, piss off. You know, like people get people get offended, like really badly. And then you come back and people mellow out. And I remember the ten year reunion. I was going there being like, oh, is this gonna be another like f you and like (laughs) you're a wrong and you did this on Saturday night. But people mellow out. And they don't care after a while, and people stop like the dick measuring. That's that's around for a few years, and then people are like, oh, you just wish the best for your, you know. Mm. Do you reckon that's well, maturity? Gonna, yes, and I think that a lot of people lack that, and I, I would I would stand by that. A lot of people take a while, and I think honestly, traveling, d- doing different things, doing things like this, traveling alone, mm. or and or exposing yourself to different cultures. You know, especially for us, especially hanging around girls, not in a romantic, not even a romantic way. Yeah, I know what you mean. But like out of the boys' culture, yeah. you'd be surprised how it changes you and suddenly you can't just be that, yeah, no, so I got hammered last night and, yeah, man, just working on finance, you know, like just doing, 
got this yeah. job, you know, you have, and that's why you guys doing this thing, you've already got so much more to talk about. And that gives you the edge of 22. Cause I remember I, um, yeah, I had a falling out with some of the guys in my year. Cause I, I changed, I moved on. They're like, no, you're dogging the boys. And I was like, this is actually ridiculous. Like that is yeah. a ridiculous way, but it's what we grew up with the whole, you know what I mean? Like the whole, yeah. nah, man, the boys, but no, there's so much more life than that. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. It's interesting to see how you can acknowledge your, it, you seem like you're very like in touch with who you are. Oh, look, it took a while. I was very insecure for a while. And that, that is all part of it. I was extreme. Oh man, especially leaving the bubble, you get really insecure. Like, oh man, especially when you're a bit younger, you're like, oh my God, you know, blah, blah. am I big enough? Am I tall enough? Am I blah, blah, yeah. blah. Uh, you know, what is, what is, what's his name? Think of me if I post this, will someone pay me out? And after a while, you just, you get over it. It takes time. It's not, it's not overnight. It takes time. Yeah. yeah it, take, it, it, it really takes time. So it's like, it, it's quite interesting to sort of have, see how, how far I've come. But yeah, I talking when, I was, this, around, when I was around your age, I was so insecure. I was like, Oh my God, like, well, well blah, blah, blah. Think of me. Will someone pay me out if I post or, you know, like, yeah. no, is that cool? And then you're like, man, you, you're being the loser. The fact that you care. Well, the, the thing you just said, world. when you said, make stories with our faces in it the first thing i thought was oh god we're gonna get shit for that you know what i mean no but after a while no but people will and you will get like especially 100 percent we will like of course yeah, you know you get jealous people but like with me i went to that 10 year reunion and i hadn't with a lot of them i hadn't like sued things over for a mm. while since our little like you know falling and then i went there ex- prepared i was like are we going round two you know you dog the boys are you ready and I got in there and everyone that gave me a hug was like, we're so proud of you. You know, mm. you put your face out there and I don't even understand, but I'll watch your videos just to support you. And I was like, what? You're the one that telling me to yeah. speak English, that I was a dog, that, you know, I dogged the boys. And mm. they were like, no, nah, I mean, you, you were always just doing your thing. And, you know, we couldn't keep up with that and we couldn't respect that. And you did your thing and you got to be so proud of yourself for, for doing, you know, blazing your own trail. And I went, whoa, that was really nice to hear that from people yeah. people mellow out and you know some people will take like especially oh, 22 especially yeah some of the guys will go to on your case oh you guys look at these guys but secretly they're jealous or they're insecure and they're not on their path yet and that's normal yeah interesting yeah, you can't please everyone you can't please everyone that's I'm true sure. yeah you always have so and trust me as well especially you always have someone who doesn't like your stuff which someone who doesn't i have that with certain students uh, occasionally i give class and there's just no it just doesn't connect it's normal. Mm. It's not, it's not, it's not your fault. People are just different. Yeah. Oh, what you gotta do is, to wrap it up, what you got to do is to police yourself is if you guys, I mean, if I can just a bit of life advice, if you guys find yourself being that, Oh no, this guy's a bronc or nah, this guy is like, look at this person. Nah, nah. Like, nah, this guy's a, nah, he's not going to do that. Or he's only good because his dad gave him this. You're the one who's got to watch what you're saying. You're the one who's jealous yeah. secretly. Yeah. I read a thing that said hurt people hurt. And that's Sorry? Like, hurt people hurt. I read well, it, it's true. If, if you find it, because I, even to this day, it's normal. I, I have to police myself. Some like, oh, no, he just got that job because, or no, he just, he, he's just done that because blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, no, 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 hold up. The person's work for it. doesn't matter. You mm. should be happy for the success. Mm. You yeah. Know? And if, if you're the one, some, like, snarkily making cotton, you're the loser. Yeah. And, you know, and, you know, so if there's anything, I hope I've instilled a bit of courage in you guys to keep this, you know, to give it a good crack, you know? I'm getting more and more every every episode. Yeah, yeah. put on you guys, put on you. Thanks for that, Hugo. Well, I appreciate your time, Hugo. Thank you very no, much. Thanks. 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 Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I ranted on the end there. No, rant. No, I was, rant. It's the whole point of the platform. Yeah. Yeah. No, good on you. Yeah, guys, can I, um, can I get a little photo of this and, and, and put it on my... Uh... Oh, please, can you add oh. up? Wait, I'll stop recording. <laughs> yeah. Becca, I'll wrap it up for you. Thanks. Yeah, here we go. So I've got...